This is something that I've got, I got from, uh, or saw on a VHS tape many, uh, many years ago, several years ago from Kalani. Kalani has a really cool YouTube channel that I watch uh, on occasion, sometimes a couple times a week, just seeing what he's putting up there and they're really good videos called World Drum Club. You'll check it out. Check it out, World Drum Club, and that's by Kalani. This is a, a, a tone exercise that I saw in the tape, and it basically goes like this. Bass, bass, open, open, closed, closed, and I'm using a muff tone, okay? So I'm pressing down. And then slap, slap. Now, in the past, I when my students are you learning an open slap and they're first getting used to that, I may have them do a close slap. So close, close. So it would go open, open, open. I'm sorry, bass, bass. Let's start with our right hand. Open, open, close, close, closing the tone. Muff, muff, pressing down a little bit, keeping our fingers not tight but together. And then slap close slap slap okay so it would look like this a little bit faster bass bass open open close close slap slap really emphasizing not going just putting it down slightly to close it right so bass bass open open close close slap slap you hear how you can only so try not to go hard on that, just... Now, let's see what it's like with the open slap. Bass, bass, open, open tones, close, close, slap, slap. Open slap meaning nothing else is on the drum, and we get tone with that dry slap, or the slap sound. Okay? Close slap. A little more punctuated on the left hand. Sound the same on the right. Okay, so it's important to develop those as well. So let's turn on a metronome and see what this looks like if we put it together. So I have it on 91, and we're going to do a close slap at first. Okay, one, two, ready, go, bass, bass, open. Close, close, slap, slap, bass, bass, open, open, close, close, slap, slap, bass, bass, open, open, close, close, slap, slap. Now, doing a close slap in this exercise is going to be a little more difficult at first at a faster speed, so you'll want to slow it down. It's important to practice slow as I've spoken about before and then build your speed. Let's see what it looks like in open. Now, if you want to know more about how to play a slap correctly, you can go on my older videos and the, go on the playlist on this channel and go Conga Tutorials, and there should be some videos, some older videos on a slap. And I'll probably do an update. I need to do an update on how to play a slap. Eric um, Perez has some great... Uh, tutorials on getting a good slap tone. Check him out at A Percussion Life on YouTube. Really cool channel. You the man, Eric. So check him out if you want to know more about getting a good slap tone. But this is a great exercise to incorporate. So let's try this together. Well, actually, let me do the open slap first. Now, that's what it would look like if I did the open slap. The thing about this exercise, when you incorporate it in your practice, is to make sure that every single note sounds the same. If they're bass notes, the right and left. If you're at a certain speed and the left keeps, say you're right-handed and the left keeps sounding a little weak, you need to slow it down and focus on the left hand, okay? Now, which hand should you start with? I would alternate it. Start one where you do 20 times with the right hand leading and then 20 times with the left hand leading or one minute straight with the right and one minute straight with the left. Another thing you can do is if you have a hard time leading with your left hand, then practice this 
this exercise just with your left hand. Now you're doing two things. You're folk well three really. You're you're working your tone, you're also working your your weak hand and you are increasing your meter, your tempo, your ability to stay locked in a tempo. All right? So a little bit faster. I'm good. I'm going to put it up a little bit faster. Show you what it looks like a little bit up to speed. 2 3 4 Now, you can do that straight through, or you can incorporate a the quarter notes and eighth notes together. So I'll do two measures of quarter notes, and then two measures of eighth notes. So uh, one, two, three, four, or yeah, two, three, four. So basically two times, I'm sorry. Got a three, uh, few different moves there, so it's not. Anyways, so you can incorporate this two different ways, using quarter notes and eighth notes. So we can do two passes of quarter notes, two passes of eighth notes. Would look like this. One, two. That's two times. Again. One. Again, quarter notes. Eighth notes now. Right? And you could just do that for a whole minute. Now we are doing four things. Well, we're doing more than that, but four big things that we're working on is our, our meter, our tempo, we work with a metronome. You're working on your tone. This is a tone exercise, working on these basic tones. There's more than just this, but these are your foundational basic tones. So you're working on those two things, tone and tempo, and then you're also working on your weak leading hand, as well as your note values, quarter notes and eighth notes, and putting them together. Often people may be able to lock in on a quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, maybe even play some thirty-second note stuff. But when it comes to playing in time with music, with other musicians, and playing with the same tempo, and changing those note values from quarter notes to eighth notes, that's where it might get a little bit weird for some people. It might get a little off. Um, so yeah, now there can be other ways to practice this. You can incorporate sixteenth notes. Right? You can practice triplets, which might be a little more advanced, okay? You notice I just messed up at the end there. But, and also my snare drum somewhere, one of these drums is talking along with me. Whatever, we're just going to leave it as it is. So, this is a great exercise. Why don't I play, I'll play this for a minute. I'll set my metronome here. And you can practice right along with me. I'll actually put it for about a minute and a half. I will do it for, we'll actually do, we'll slow it down here, we'll do two times through the exercise with the metronome quarter notes, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and two times eighth notes, one and two and three and four and boom, 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 okay? So we'll do that, we'll try that. Here we go, ready? Practice along with me. One, two, ready, go. Again. Quarter. 
eighth notes. All right, very good. Something to keep in mind is that when we play the, the muff note, it sounds like a muff, 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 muff. Not too light. We don't want the tone in there. All the tone of an open ringing tone. We want it to press into the drum, okay? Try to keep your hands flat as opposed to um, too much of this. Try to keep yourself relaxed, okay? And your hands is flat, meaning notice right here where my hand is playing and it's parallel across, okay? Right here, not like this, not like this, all right? Right here, okay? At first, this isn't completely natural. Some this might be what you want to do. But we'll try to stay away from this for many different reasons. One, to protect your thumbs later on. And some of it is also aesthetics. But later on, when it comes to speed and moving around on the drum, it starts helping. All right? So, yeah, this has been another percussion on the conga tutorial. Tutorial on the congas. Yeah, all that good stuff. Anyways, let me know if you have any questions. If this was helpful, don't forget to... Hit subscribe and then you'll be notified of any future videos thank you all for being patient with the other videos that I have coming up uh, ethnomusicology sessions and some other cool things I have in the works anyways God bless you heaven smile upon you see you soon